Welcome to the Embodiment Podcast. This show is for you if you see the body as more than a brain taxi. It's for people interested in coming home to the body as a holistic aspect of who we are and how we live. Episodes contain practical tips, exercises you can take away, and interviews with embodiment specialists from around the world. I'm your host, Mark Walsh. So on this episode, we're going to look at cycles. So what you're going to learn here is uh, how cycles are a key part of life. They're almost certainly vital to how you do your work uh, in terms of working, making your work with the body more effective. Uh, we're also going to look at the big picture. So you may have an idea of some sort of rhythm or cycle kind of work for your own work. We're going to kind of look at the big picture of how this might be. It, it will make you more effective in what you're doing. It's kind of one of the key models that we can use. So a couple of quotes to start us off. To everything there is a season, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to reap that which has been planted. That is from the Bible, Ecclesiastes, I believe. Um, Oh, nice one here. Of what is the body is made? Of what is the body made? It is made of emptiness and rhythm. At the heart of the world, there is no solidity. There is only dance. That's the late, great George Leonard. Um, Yeah, one of the founders of the human potential movement. So couple of quotes there cycles we're talking about the rhythm of life today so we can think of embodiment as about you know structure and you might be looking at a posture or things like that but there's also movement and there's not just random movement there's rhythm the modern world we've kind of lost something of the sense of natural rhythm so we've lost uh, our connection for example you know it's night time now i can just turn the light on in my in my flat i don't have i'm not reliant upon natural um I've just turned my radiator, my heater on for the first time this year. It's becoming winter, so I'm a little bit more cut off from that. You know, it still affects me, obviously, in terms of the daylight and things like that. But uh, as we move into autumn to fall, I'm less affected by that than when, uh, for example, I used to work outside at one point. And you didn't. You can have a heater with you. You might have a better coat on in the winter, uh, but you really were much more noticing those natural seasons. You know, I used to look out at the window every morning. If you know you're going to be on top of a, I was working with children in outdoor education. You knew you'd be on the top of an abseil tower or a climbing wall, and uh, you know you would know that you were uh, subject to the natural cycles and seasons. And we can't ever totally get rid of it, but what you'll see is that people will try. They'll, for example, you know, take coffee in the morning or alcohol in the evening find a way to sort of interrupt those natural seasons and rhythms uh, as much as possible. Um, Often people are very keen on the sort of middle part, the full throttle part, uh, rather than the sort of quiet restful period. And I'm going to introduce some um, some models for this uh, in a way. These relate to everything we do. Uh, I remember uh, the word Adam Barley, the fire rhythms teacher I know and really like, talked about was fractal. So they work on a small level, but also on a much bigger level and small levels within the much bigger levels. So you've got a day, you've got a year, you've got a lifetime. Uh, It could be a project you're working on. Uh, What else? Even having a sip of, you know, sip of water. There's a beginning, a middle and an end. Um, think of a kiss this is a good sort of micro example um if you've ever gone in for a kiss and got it wrong you'll know something about this uh you'll realize that like a good kiss you kind of there's a movement in there's a ripe moment um even with someone you know well right even with your wife or whatever right um and there's a way you move up to it and then there's like a passionate part there's a you know hug has the same principle and it's like really going for it and then there's like as you kind of kiss away and then you part yeah. Hug the same thing. You see someone, you move towards them, a good, strong hug, then you gradually move away from them. If you do any of those things, uh, too abruptly, um, people will feel it. You know, if you rush in too quick for the hug, or, oh, your friends are like, Whoa, you know, or if you kind of hug and then just run away or, you know, go for a friend's dinner and you have to just say, go, go, right, I'm going to go now, bye, get your coat and go. So we, we, we naturally, even in this more modern, numb sort of slightly interrupted modern world um we really still feel it when uh those rhythms are uh, not negotiated well there's a, a negotiation to it if you will because everyone's everyone's rhythm slightly different so there's always going to be like one of you has to leave the hug first but if we're sensitive in our embodiment we're going to feel those things and that that's going to um just make whatever you're doing more effective. Yeah. So in a class, for example, let's take a yoga class is this beginning, middle and end. There's a cycle to that. It talks about the hero's journey. I think before uh, this cycle 
of leaving the known into the unknown and then coming back to the unknown. So in a way, we're all masters of rhythm. You know, our breath is a rhythm. Our heartbeat is a rhythm. Sleep, nervous impulses, you know, maybe yeah, the craniosacral people talk about rhythms I don't even understand. Uh, the universe is a rhythm. Uh, the silent, George Leonard's book, The Silent Pulse, really talks about these um, very beautifully, actually, very beautifully. So in a way, we're all masters of rhythm. It's becoming a bit more than that. So I've got another quote from George Leonard here. I think he's the, the top person for looking at rhythm. Gabriel Roth would be the other one, from the founder of Fire Rhythms uh, Movement and Dance. So George Leonard, at the heart of each of us, whether our imperfections, whatever our imperfections, there exists a silent pulse of perfect rhythm a complex of waveforms and resonances, which is absolutely individual and unique, and yet which connects us to everything in the universe. That is some profound shit. Nice one, George. So on the one hand, we all live in rhythm. You know, we all have night and day, whatever it is. But on the other hand, we have a unique rhythm. Uh, it's kind of like wave rather than particle. So if you think you can be lumps of stuff, bits, but we're also movement, we're also rhythm, we're also cycle, I often talk about this in cycles, you know, the seasons being a cyclical season. Um, we talk about a tree or a Mark Walsh as if we were nouns, but really we're verbs. Now, one of my favorite sayings, I think I was first to say, I hope I was, I might not have been, is the body is a verb. Yeah. So I'm Mark Walshing right now. Even this microphone, which looks solid, is actually microphoning. It's in a process. We're both in a process of slow decay, from a very Buddhist perspective. Um, but, you know, there's a blossoming of life. I'm at a certain point in my life now. I'm 38 years old. That's a different point in my life than when I was 15. And you see people that are sort of trying to live one part of life like it was another. I'm not talking about not aging gracefully or saying that old people can't be full of youth or young people can't be wise, but there are different stages in life. And I, and I think most cultures really accept this. And I think we've had this um, glorification of youth, shall we say, which has made it so the best part is that, that, that first part, the exciting part. Um, so there's loads of models of seasons and rhythm. Seasons is my favorite one. Spring, summer, autumn, winter. Doesn't always work that well if you're uh, in certain parts of Asia that just have a rainy season, a dry season. In China, they have five seasons, but most people kind of get it. Spring, summer, autumn, winter. I'll look at different ways we can talk about that as we go on. That's often the model I'm teaching with students. Um, and I might start with, you know, business, I'll start with teaching this with handshakes as you come in for the handshake. I tend to be a bit quick in, you might have noticed that in my podcast, so I dive straight into things. Um, some people like a bit more foreplay, a bit more warm up. Yeah. Um, other people like the intensity in the middle. We'll come back to your personal patterns later. Other people, the leaving, whatever. So yin and yang, you can think of that, you know, the on and the off, the most simple, most fundamental cycle, if you will, one of the oldest ones. Um, three part cycles, like in, in, uh, in uh, Brahma, the creator, Vishnu, the preserver, Shiva, the destroyer, that's kind of Hindu three part model of it um Stuart Heller one of my favorite embodiment teachers he talks about um to add on to, to keep and to let go yeah I think it's influenced by Chinese and Indian medicine philosophy uh, so three part and of course the most simple one beginning middle and end um I talked to a sales guy recently he said no he's a, he was an expert in sales he said you know there's three parts to the sale these are the three parts beginning middle and end uh, experts in presentation skills say tell them what you're going to tell them tell them and then tell them what you've told them so it's kind of the format i, I keep to in podcasts I say like here's what's coming up and i tell you and at the end i say oh here's the wrap up the conclusion yeah fire rhythms gabrielle roth this if you haven't danced fire rhythms or any of the sort of offshoots i highly recommend it um let's go i've danced it so many times let's see if i can remember it so uh, it's flowing which is you know going with the flow moving with the feet staccato it's kind of more edgy um then this chaos where rah, rah, the head goes all go crazy going to lyrical which is very light and then into stillness um so she talks about the five rhythms this is what she observed by watching people dance that if they were just sort of left to follow their bodies and go to their own accords they would do this so then she started um, using music to encourage each part of those rhythms I, I really like it as a practice it has its pros and cons but you know for me particularly if you have like a form practice like martial arts it can be really nice to um yeah to take on a, a, a practice of cycle like that and then you'll see that different people have their different parts in the cycle even because i'm you know i'm sick sick of staccato because i've been doing business all week and i'm in staccato mode um or you know chaos is really hard for me because i'm a control freak and it's hard to let go adam barley's done some sort of even maths work on this adam barley's well worth uh, worth looking up on this front 
So looking at this cycle, seeing how this affects our life, you know, Adam will say he sees it in nature, sees it everywhere. Watching a wave crash would be the, uh, you know, it's the rhythm and there's this flowing part, then it gets edgy, then it crashes to chaos. Then you have this foam then it goes to stillness before starting again. Um, so dance, Gabriel Ross Farin, that's a really good way of playing with cycles. Uh, there's other versions of it, you know, there's other uh, dance forms that go through slightly different cycles, but um, Gabriel Ross Farin is kind of original one, one of the best ones, yeah. Hero's Journey I've mentioned before. Um, so that's the sort of, you know, a uh, class is the hero's journey. So going out of a class, going out of the known, into the unknown, uh, having the confrontation in the belly of the whale, coming back home with the gifts, the return often being the hardest and usually uh, unmissed part. So, um, yeah, look up Joseph Campbell's Hero's Journey. You can look at films through this lens. You know, this, a film has a certain rhythm. Uh, you know, a good movie isn't like starting with too intense. There's a build up. You know, maybe it has a little bit of that, but then it's like, okay, the character the build-up then there's the action some kind of um conflict or transformation you're leading to some kind of resolution the classic they all live happily ever after you know going off into the sunset whatever it is um so this is the cycle of a movie and if a movie doesn't have that it's kind of unsatisfying you know it's like some bad american action movie where you're just it's just like full-on action the whole time we might say it's like full-on summer the whole time uh, isn't so satisfying. So, um, yeah, story journalism, you can see this in all, in all kinds of ways. Yeah. The seasons model I spoke about, but that's uh, a key one and think of each season as birthing the next one. Each one has the other one like yin and yang, the dot in the middle contained within it. So, you know, I've kind of gone on for a bit, but how does this impact you? Like which of these models resonates? Which do you see at work? Uh, yin becoming yang, one birthing the other as it comes to its full expression, you naturally want to do something. Yeah. You go to the full expression, then you naturally want to rest. You talk fully, you really express yourself, then you naturally want to listen and absorb and learn and take in. So you can think of spring as like starting, awakening, growing, accelerating, rising, uh, kind of like blossom, green shoots, conception, Direction could be up here, kind of childhood. Simplest model would be like turning on. Yeah, so it'd be like turning on, off. T- uh, t- turning on, on, be spring and summer. Turning off, off, autumn and winter. Yeah, so in, in relationship, it's greeting, relating, parting and being alone. That's often one people miss. So that's the we version rather than the I version. The it, if you're doing a project, is preparing, doing, uh, wrapping up, concluding, and then not doing. Again, our culture tends to miss that one, the winter part. Even the reflective part, you know, businesses go from one project to the next, never really. Um, some people don't complete things. Maybe you're someone that starts a lot of new projects and doesn't complete well. You know, they, this can show up in little ways, even like leaving cupboard doors open in the house, for example, you know, um, not fully completing on an action. Other people find it really hard to start something. Yeah. So I, let me finish, actually. I started on spring, didn't I? So summer fulfilling expression full growth full speed maximum talk about the fruit of something the fully green leaves mature animals and families the sun forwards uh, early adulthood yeah autumn kind of later on in adulthood uh, containing slowing declining this is um you know energetically things are kind of going in now containment at this point uh, richard strizzi heckler has a model of this actually i think he calls this one containing um you know images be like nuts falling leaves aging animals kind of second half of adulthood middle age you call it middle age but it's not really the middle um yeah so that's at least from the eye you know you've gone from waking to being awake to now sleep feeling sleepy but not yet sleeping so you're turning off but not yet off so winter ending parting could be preparing resting reflecting slowest lowest uh hibernating you can think of this as death um you can think of this as uh snow maybe rather than sun down rather than up you could think of it in terms of life stages either as death or as elderhood you know you could put that on autumn um the key thing here though is not doing so sleeping being turning off you know with a light switch you know it's turning on on turning off off really 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 simple kind of model there what's your bias this is really the key thing the key thing is so what's your bias as a person like do you tend to rush into new relationships or find that hard you know do you find it hard to ask a girl out do you find it uh, hard to ask for a business deal to go into something uh, or you, do you love the intensity? Maybe you're addicted to the intensity. Maybe you don't like the intensity. Maybe you like that sort of wrapping things up, concluding you're the person that gets the project finished. You know, a, a good team will have people in different strengths within that. Um, and do you rest? That's, you know, do you leave time? You have, if 
do you have one of those friends that just jumps from relationship to relationship? Yeah. Without stopping in between to actually go, what did I learn to be on their own for a bit? Kind of important. Um, so yeah, noticing your cycles here, you'll see it in small ways. If you're always the one who's leaving or always the one who's starting, notice that. And obviously this expresses through the body. You know, I was teaching this once and I jumped up to do the next bit and I was like, there's an example. You know, I was able to quickly jump up. That's part of my being quickly jump in in conversations, whatever it is. That's part of my kind of spring-like tendency. And obviously these can fuck you up. You know, these can really cause you problems, uh, right from your business to your relationships, you know, all kinds of projects, whatever it is. So becoming aware of those. Just to keep it experimental, why don't we notice our breathing? You can feel these in your body. So breathing is a good one. Pulse is a little harder for some people. So noticing that, Breathing in, coming to maximum, pausing a little for a moment often, then breathing out. And again, that pause at the end when the, the winter period of the breath where the breath is uh, not, you know, not totally empty, but you're resting between breaths. So there's the breathing in. Notice how that increases. There's a crescendo. And then hold it out for a moment, the breathing out. And then again, the moment before breathing in, just breathe for a few breaths and you might be aware of mindfulness, but being mindful, not just the sensations of breathing, but where are you in the cycle of breathing? Be quiet for a few moments so you can do that. Nice. I like to keep these podcasts experiential. Feel free to pause me and do that for a lot longer if you want. I'm just aware that dead air time isn't always the best thing for a podcast. So, um, yeah, there's, there's a reason for that, right? Dead air time. We think we we'll have to have that summer, have to have that constant activity. That's the culture, isn't it? So maybe I'm playing into that. So, um, subjectively, that's the activation, slightly longer activation, increasing, peaking, containing, decreasing, completing, resting, the slightly longer version of, you know, turning on, on, turning off, off, um, wake, you know, waking up, or being awake, being sleepy, sleeping. Yeah. Um, so activation, increasing, peaking, containing, decreasing, completing, resting. That's a profound way of looking at any eye cycle. Um, you might go, where am I in my day as well? So I'm kind of, it's fairly late. I'm recording this tonight, been at work. I'm aware that in my, in this podcast, I might be about halfway through, but in my day, I'm 90% of the way through. I'm going, all right, time to lower the light levels in my house. Time to just maybe eat a little snack, maybe have a bath, move towards the last 10% of my day as I go to bed. Yeah. I'm, if you just try and work up to you need to go to sleep, you won't be able to sleep. And there's a reason for that. You need that down cycle. You need the autumn period. You need to contain, decrease, and complete. Some people don't complete well. I've noticed this on courses. Um, some people like leave on the last day or they every time that, oh, I've got a plane, I've got to leave 10 minutes early. No, you fucking haven't. Stay till the end. Keep your mind and your soul where your ass is. So, you know, helping people on courses as a facilitator, if you do body courses of some kind, arrive like look around notice where you are say hello to people here are the ground rules yeah here's how you feel safe here's my authority here's you know blah 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 here's the rest of the group to connect with that's the connection part yeah um, but then also the leaving part so letting people say thank you making time for people to go to reflect go what have i learned today it's really tempting as a facilitator we normally well, I don't have to speak for myself, but I think a lot of other people too feel like there's not enough time and you want to give your best stuff, right? So I'm cramming the workshop full of good stuff. It's like, this is, I've, I've examined, God, a couple of hundred embodiment facilitators now on the EFC course that we run, the embodied facilitator course. And the most common mistake I would say is um, not spending long enough on the wrap up. And it doesn't matter if people have half an hour or a day that they always don't spend enough time on the wrap up. If they're junior people, if they're fairly newer to it, that's really common. So a good yoga teacher will have a nice long Shavasana, you know, the time for the wrap up, maybe a little reflection afterwards before people go home. Um, 
yeah, allowing time to say goodbye, for people to say thank you to you, not just rushing out the door. They need that to feel complete, you know? And I'll, I'll sometimes say on workshops, what do you need to feel complete? What do you need to feel complete here? And people might say thank you. It might be a reflection. It might be a symbolism. We like to use ritual. You can use ritual transitions if you want to formalize this. You know, we step across the line to begin. Uh, we get some people send us an email saying, I'm in to begin. They have a ritualized sense where they take a, a wooden sword from us on EFC and it's like a beginning. It's a ritual. Um, you might have a no, we have another ritual where they turn to, to work with other people and they go out into the world to the first time halfway through the course to work with other people when they're in the summer course. And we have completion rituals of mostly of gratitude and appreciation. There's other things too. Um, yeah, of completion rituals. So the subjective one, we've got the activation, the increasing, the peaking, the peaking. Some people love that. If you've got orgasm and orgasm is a great example of all this. Yeah. You know, you're getting turned on, you peak, you orgasm, uh, hopefully. Uh, and then there's that like, ah, oh, the come down and you cuddle and you smoke a cigarette or whatever the kids do these days and then you go to sleep right there's like a whole it's not just like straight in or straight out again right there's a whole cycle there people get annoyed if you miss some of that cycle right? rightly so um so we can think of this as a you know going up or going down into depth for the now again if you want to see the cycle that way it's another way of looking at it yeah you know what do you prefer do you prefer the excitement and starts do you prefer when everything's expressed fully and going full on, do you prefer wrapping things up or do you prefer the end, the rest? So noticing those, which do you prefer? And you might be longing for one because you're overdoing another. So that's a thing to be careful of, yeah? Um, begins with that subjective, so it begins with interest. That's the beginning. It's just like, oh, curiosity. You know, oh, look at her. Or, oh, I wonder what that's like. Oh, I could learn Russian. Yeah, that, that beginning. Um, rhythm excitement is the model by Richard Strozier Heckler, or rhythm action, he sometimes calls it. So that's that's worth a look. I think it's in one of his early books. He outlines that. Um, yeah, it's, it's in several of them. Though. So relationship cycle, the we cycle. This is the I cycle. But there's also the we cycle. Um, aloneness, meeting, hi, <laughs> connecting. Oh, we've got things in common. Dialoguing, let's have a conversation, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, transformation, something happens when two people meet, even if it's, and this could be like a marriage over years, right? Or it could be a romance over a day, or it could be a 10 minute conversation in the street, right? It's some sort of transformation. Oh, I learned something great. Then you complete and then you depart. Um, so greeting, relating, parting, and aloneness. Notice which you like doing. Do you like going to parties and greeting a lot of people? Do you like the deep relating? Some people are well into that parting are you like bye bye or in russia they say you leave like an englishman it means you kind of leave too quickly and again the aloneness can you be at home on your own and in good company so it's not just internal we live life in relationship a good punch or a good kiss whatever it is good hug includes these so i invite you if you if you've got anyone else around you and it's socially appropriate see if you can just take a moment pause the podcast shake hands with someone kiss them hug them and notice where you are in that kind of cycle um yeah so the frantic expression the yin and the yang real relationships need all of these parts and you do them again and again and again and same with my wife you know i greet her when i came in from work today from uh, doing a body yoga workshop in london I'm greeting her how's your day what have you been up to she'd been working nights so i hadn't seen her in a little while and then you know when she went out to work nights we said goodbye i'll see you later there's a, there's a process there. now i'm on my own in the house and that's kind of nice you know even in, with a really healthy happy relationship it's, it's nice to have that alone time um if you're clingy if you can't have that alone time that will kill a relationship real quick particularly with an introvert um yes this cultural specific stuff around this it's like why does almost every language in the world everyone that i've come across tell me if i'm wrong here actually if there are ones that you know of, have a word for hello and goodbye and have a word for how have a phrase for like how are you the middle part yeah it's building that connection you know why are hello and goodbye words this is just implicit, isn't it? It's implicit for us. You know, we have the title of the movie and the credits, the end of the book, the beginning of the book, at the end of the book, the beginning. Um, so the action cycle, don't think of this as just as a sort of hippie, subjective or interpersonal thing. We have this other aspect, which is around uh, pro like a project, for example. Uh, you know, I, I do this with a project, like the podcast project, yeah? Um, so preparing, allowing, starting, doing, the actual doing, not straight in, that's not the first one, completing, reflecting, that's where you learn, and then not doing, yeah? Prepare, do, stop, don't do, is, is the simple one. When I work in businesses, they often don't do enough preparation. They might not stop in time. It's do, 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 and then onto the next project without any don't doing in between. Um, yeah, if, if you want to get things done, uh, this is built, of course, on your self-regulation cycles, your personal cycles. You know, if you're... 
if you're not respecting those personal cycles of like rest or whatever it is, you're going to be fucked up. You're not going to be well. And equally, your relationships are going to be problematic if you're not respecting those cycles. My tendency to go a bit quick in with people can seem like over familiar or even rude. Uh, so that could be a problem for the project that we're talking about now. The, uh, the thing, um, you know, starting itself is vital, as it go to said, uh, whatever you can do or dream, you can do it, begin it. Boldness has genius power and magic in it. Uh, was my ex boss used to say, get on with it. Um, so action can be pushed too far though, you know, to just keep pushing, pushing period. Uh, yeah. So non-productivity I think is kind of underrated uh, in our culture. Okay, so loads on cycles there. Um, maybe take a moment to, um, you know, what have we gone through? Just reflect. So the fact that cycles are part of nature, they're part of you. We have these internal cycles, the little ones, the big ones. So you can't really get away from it, so you might as well work skillfully with it. And to do that, you have to know your tendency around this, which, you know, if you're doing an embodied practice, you can really observe how you are in the tango dance, for example. Do you like the beginning, the middle, the end? Yeah. Uh, in the martial arts technique, there's a beginning, there's a middle, there's an end. And you'll notice some people don't express very well at the end of their technique, or they're dying to get to the end. They're kind of sort of rushing the technique to get to the end. Um, yeah. So no, notice that in what you're doing. How does this impact you? How does this affect you? This is the reflection I'd like you to have. Um, coming back to the body again, noticing where you are in your day, noticing your breath. You know, these podcasts, it's all talk, 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 isn't it? It's an embodiment podcast. How does it actually feel? Where do you feel in the cycle now? How does it feel as I bring this to an end, right? Like I'm not just abruptly going, right, done, bye now. So I'm, you know, I'm trying to bring it to a close. I'm going to be saying thank you to you guys for listening. I'm noticing, I'm reflecting, okay, what have I learned? Maybe what have I done well, not so well, this podcast. You know, maybe it was a bit shorter than I would have liked. I could have, you know, I'm probably going to have found, oh, is that I could have prepared a bit more. That tends to be the thing I tend to underdo. I could have got a nice quote from Wendy Palmer or someone or Stuart Heller to include in the book as well as the George Leonard ones, you know, in the in podcast, sorry. So yeah, I've got videos on this as well. If you're interested in, in, in resources on that, look up Mark Walsh Cycles. So I hope this has been useful. Thank you very much. If you enjoyed this episode, subscribe to get more. If you'd like to help us build the Embody Tribe, leave a review on iTunes or share this on your social media. If you're interested in training globally, sign up to receive the newsletter at embodiedfacilitator.com. Until next time, welcome home to the body. <laughs>